Our goal in analyzing this data set is to generalize the results to the population that the sample was drawn from. In other words, if we see changes in brain activity in our sample, can we say that these changes would likely be seen in the population as well? In order to test this, we will run a third level analysis, which is a group level analysis. We calculate the mean and the variance for a contrast estimate and then test whether that mean is statistically significant. First, let's take a quick look at the second level results we just created. In the second level directory, there is one feet directory for each cope, and each of these directories contains a stats directory with the cope images and their conversions to T stats and Z stats. We will be using these later for a region of interest or ROI analysis. For now, from the Flinker directory, open the Feet GUI and then select Higher Level Analysis. Choose Inputs are 3D cope images from Feet directories and change the number of inputs to 26. Just like with the second level analysis, we can copy and paste a list of the cope images. In the terminal, navigate to the directory flanker second level dot g feet cope three dot feet slash stats and then type this line of code. This will list all of the cope images in numerical order, even though they aren't zero padded. Copy and paste this list into the input data window by again typing control Y, just as we did before with the second level analysis. After clicking OK, label the output directory flanker level 3 inc minus con. Now click on the stats tab. For a third level analysis, we will use mixed effects. This models the variance so that our results are generalizable to the population that our sample was drawn from. Flame 1, FSL's local analysis of mixed effects, estimates parameters by using information about both within subject and between subject variability. Flame 1 plus 2 is considered more accurate, but the additional benefit is usually minimal, and it takes much longer. Randomize is a non-parametric test, which we will discuss at another time. For now, leave it as the default as Flame 1. Since we're using a simple design, we can quickly create a GLM using the Model Setup Wizard button. We've already taken the contrast for each subject, so we can select Single Group Average. When you click Process, you should see a model that looks like this. Now we finally discuss the Post Stats tab. The only defaults you would probably want to consider changing are the thresholding options. None won't do any thresholding. Uncorrected will allow for individual voxels to pass the threshold specified in Z threshold, which in this case would only show voxels that have a value greater than a Z statistic of 3.1. Voxel will perform a Bonferroni correction by dividing the alpha threshold by the number of voxels. And lastly, cluster uses a cluster defining threshold to determine whether a cluster of voxels is significant. The logic is that neighboring voxels are not independent of one another, and this reduced number of independent tests is taken into account when estimating significance. For a more detailed explanation of how this works, click on the link in the More Info box down below. For now, all you need to know is that the default of a cluster correction analysis with a cluster defining threshold of z equals 3.1 and a cluster threshold of p equals 0.05 is appropriate. Now click Go. This will take about 5 to 10 minutes, depending on how fast your computer is. When the analysis finishes, you will see an HTML page like this. You'll want to look at the Results tab, which displays a thresholded Z statistic image on a template MNI brain. These are axial slices, and they give you a quick overview of where the significant clusters are located. To take a closer look, go back to the terminal and open Fossilize. When it loads, load a standard template such as MNI152T1, the 1mm brain. 
then load the Thresh ZSTAT1.NII.GZ image located in Flanker third level ink minus con.g feet cope1.feet. This image shows only those clusters that were determined to be significant based on the criteria you specified in the post stats tab. My preferences are to change the color scheme to red yellow and then to change the interpolation to make the results look smoother. I also like to turn off the crosshairs. You can then take a snapshot of this montage with the camera icon and include the image as a figure in your manuscript. Lastly, you can view a table of the significant clusters by clicking on View, Layout, Feet Mode. This will display the peak Z statistic for each cluster, and you can jump between the peaks of each cluster by clicking on these buttons. The corresponding MNI coordinates are listed here, which you can then include in your manuscript. You've come a long way since you began analyzing this data set, and in some cases, the type of analysis you just did may be all you need to do. However, we will cover one more type of analysis called region of interest which is a type of confirmatory analysis. To see how, watch the next video in the playlist.